Welcome back. Oceania is the theme for this episode. We revisit Australia, where they've gone further down the rabbit hole. And in Aotearoa, New Zealand, they are revisiting the smoke-free regulations to implement more restrictions on tobacco. Lastly, in the Philippines, the bill for vaping regulations was never vetoed, so now it will become law after 15 days of publication in the Gazette. As we mentioned in the last episode, Australia has now gone further down the rabbit hole. This time, the government of Western Australia has been on a witch hunt with vendors. And in New South Wales, they are on the same path, sending letters threatening large fines and stating that liquids sold as non-nicotine actually contain high nicotine content. For background, since October 21, it has been illegal across all of Australia to buy nicotine without first getting a prescription from a doctor. The current legislation in Western Australia, the Tobacco Product Control Act 2006, bans the sale of items that look like cigarettes, such as candy cigarettes. However, the Western Australian Health Minister has decided to reinterpret the act differently overnight and they now say it is prohibited to sell everything vape related, including liquids, coils, batteries, and cotton wick. All of a sudden, after years of compliance checks and guidance with no issue, vape equipment is banned, the same as candy cigarettes. Dr. Alex Wodak of Athra and a longtime harm reduction expert has said, Vaping is regulated more tightly and much more restricted than cigarettes. And if we're going to be doing anything, we should be restricting cigarettes more than we are restricting vaping. Reese White from Clouded Visions provided his thoughts on the situation by saying, no new legislation has been introduced. There have been no amendments to the Tobacco Control Act. They've simply changed their minds with no regard for the tens of thousands of Western Australians who rely on vaping as an effective quitting aid. He goes further. We have consulted with the health department on a continual basis for the past five years, obtaining their approval prior to the first store even being opened. We were given very specific rules under which to operate, rules we have all adhered to. Now, they are denying any of this ever took place, suggesting we have all somehow been openly operating illegal businesses throughout the state for the past five years. This is nothing short of a complete abuse of power, bordering on harassment, a complete disregard for due process or natural justice. Dr. Colin Mendelson, a smoking cessation provider and founder of Athra, believes that this ill-advised government plan will have the opposite effect to what was intended. Instances of use and misuse by teens will become more common and tens of thousands of Western Australian ex-smokers will be forced back to cigarettes. The only beneficiaries of this misguided plan will be the tobacco companies. Earlier this year, Health Minister Aisha Varal announced that the government will outlaw smoking for the next generation so that those who are aged 14 and under will never be legally able to buy tobacco. We want to make sure young people never start smoking. So we are legislating for a smoke-free generation. Other measures announced include reducing the amount of nicotine and tobacco products sold to very low levels and cutting down the number of outlets where tobacco can legally be sold. With vapes widely available, there is a far less harmful option available for smokers who are addicted to nicotine. At that time, the government stated that the new laws will not restrict vape sales as all of the foregoing needs to be put into the same legislation that regulates vaping. However, in the past two months, the detractors of safer nicotine products here in New Zealand have begun a full-on assault on vaping in an attempt to lobby the government to make changes to further restrict vape sales, all in the name of protecting the children. I think we do need to do more to protect our youth. Um, so what I would like to see is a ban on all 
flavours um, that are enticing to youth. I mean, there are over 10,000 you know, flavours registered in New Zealand. We don't need that. We don't need that for people to quit smoking. It's colourful, it, it smells nice, and they just want to be cool. Research shows kids who vape are actually more likely to start smoking cigarettes. In New South Wales alone, one in 10 16 to 24 year olds now vape. They have gone so far as having an episode of Four Corners from Australia re-aired on New Zealand television that was filled with information about the youth vaping epidemic and disinformation about the youth gateway. When we're talking about addiction in children, e-cigarettes may actually be more dangerous than smoking. They cause addiction, they can cause poisoning, um, toxicity through inhalation, which can lead to seizures, uh, trauma and burns, lung injury, and we found that they are harmful overall. It's far from ideal for young people to be vaping if they've never been smokers. Absolutely no question about that. But I think some of the um, more kind of alarmist statements that were made in the program aren't particularly well substantiated by good evidence in humans. Um, as long as those young people who are, who are vaping don't take up smoking and there was really no evidence in New Zealand or in the US that that's happened. Vaping leads to smoking, such as is proposed by gateway theory, then why have 100,000 Kiwis made the switch? And why has our youth smoking rate declined to 1.1%? The new regulations in the Philippines have not been vetoed, so 15 days after the law has been published in the Gazette of the Republic of the Philippines, it becomes law. Well done to the advocates in the Philippines and to President Marcos, and thank you for allowing reason and pragmatic risk-proportionate regulation to be implemented to serve the needs of the 16 million people who currently smoke in the Philippines and allow them a pathway away from harmful tobacco products. The full assault on vaping in Oceania is in full swing. Backed by a philanthropist with a lot of money and a nefarious agenda, Australia has shown that it can be bought and sold. Meanwhile, in Aotearoa, New Zealand, they are holding the line on pragmatic tobacco harm reduction policy. And once again, Full credit to the advocates in the Philippines for their hard work in getting the vaping legislation and regulations done, and we look forward to the 15-day period ending and having a proper law. Once again, thank you for joining us. <laughs>